So I'm going to uh, discuss a few, a few important complications after haploidentical stem cell transplantation. Uh, most uh, important issues uh, with this type of transplant uh, are related to viral reactivation. Uh, early post-transplant, and um, we have some significant uh, recent improvements uh, in uh, this area, and um, for, uh, for example, for prevention of CMV, we apply now routinely um, starting early post-transplant latermovir, and uh, the incidence of CMV reactivation appears to be significantly lower in these patients, and the other important advancement is um, the use of BK virus CTLs for patients who develop BK virus, significant BK virus cystitis uh, after transplant, and uh, this seems to be also effective, however, more studies are needed. But um, uh, to summarize, viral reactivation remains uh, an issue, and um, we're moving towards uh, you know, effective therapy. The instance of GVHD uh, or severe acute GVHD and significant chronic GVHD is really low in haploidentical transplantation in the current platform. As compared with uh, other uh, major uh, centers, we tend to uh, continue the tacrolimus for six months and mycophenolate for three months post-transplant. So we really try to prevent as much as possible Graversos disease post-transplant, and we are very happy uh, that this seems to be an effective strategy. And again, the reason for that is uh, post-transplant cell therapy. We we're trying to do in a, in as um, uh, in a setting with minimal complications or no complications after transplant. So um, Graversos disease appears to be much less. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, when it occurs, it's rarely um, difficult to treat. So um, uh, that's a imp significant improvement um, in, the, with, in the recent years with use of post-transplantation cyclophosphamide.